Hey, to Kathleen Gamer. Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 25, episode number 9. Our Portland weirdos have gone through some changes. We've definitely changed out about a fifth of our senior roster, and we have absolutely swapped out roughly half of our farm system all within this first year. We've made some changes, some wholesale changes, and some for the better. Last time, uh, we made our first big trades at a senior level. Uh, we had our two guys that were mid-30s, most expensive players on the roster, and we swapped them out for some late 20s guys that are you know, prime players and, and batters. We gave up a couple pitchers for a couple of batters, uh, and I think we've made some good progress. The two additions, Rowdy Tellez, Ahmad Rosario. Uh, Rosario, we'll see how they do with time. We have not progressed yet, but we've definitely saved some money. I mean, you know, their combined salary is $5 million, and the outgoing salary was about $17 million. So we are a good $12 million cheaper. And uh, got a little bit weaker in the pitching staff, though. Uh, so we'll see what the trade-off is regarding that. We are actively missing our best outfield player of Ruiz, uh, he's down with an injury a couple weeks until he is back. Team has not performed well uh, since he was hurt about a week ago. They, they've had a really wa rough week here. So let's see what happens going forward. I don't expect any more deals, but with three days to the trade deadline, it's possible. I think we are ready to kind of rush through the remainder of this first season. In order to hang on to our closer, Trevor Gott, and keep the value that he had, we were going to have to pay him more. He's up to seven and a quarter million. He has accepted the deal, so we now have Trevor Gott set up uh, to stay with us. He was with uh, Seattle a year ago. For the moment, our player payroll is almost exactly at 40 million, down from the 50, 52 million it was at. So we're about 10 million down from where we were. And with our struggling form at the moment we're down to a 370 that's still better than last year and still equal to the year before so we're still headed towards a 60 win season at least for the moment uh, but fan attendance has dropped off a little bit with this bad run of form so we'll see if we can get that going a, a little bit but you know finances for this year doing pretty decently as someone who has ruptured a disc when I was in the army, holy crap, that hurts. And um, I still have problems 20 years later with it. I will for the remainder of my life. So, ouch. And Armenteros is out for the rest of the year. Six months. Well, that takes care of the uh, Ruiz situation. Um, for the moment, I think I'm just going to leave the spot vacant. And Ruiz will fill it uh, when available. With the addition of Rowdy Tellez, Seth Brown is back to being an outfielder with Armenteros down and Ruiz coming back soon. I'm sure that one of them is going to be moving into left field. Trade deadline day. I've got one minute left and I'm working on an Austin Meadows deal. I don't know if I can get it together right now. Jorge Mateo is kind of the main piece around that. And it's getting us close, but I'm not sure I can include enough in this short span here to uh, get the deal over the line. Uh, oh, finalize the deal! Finalize the deal! The trade has been completed! We did it! 30 seconds left. That was a handful of, like, two-star level prospects. And Jorge Mateo for a big upgrade. And we've now just got seconds left, but that was a big deal to, to get through. But that's a third player with an expiring that we're going to have to go back and deal with and see what we have. Austin wasn't having a great season, but at least on paper, he's a definite upgrade for us as we get to the end of the trade deadline. Trade deadline is, that's it. One last trade proposal coming in from Milwaukee. They want Trevor Gott. But that's a lot of money, and I don't mind losing Trevor Gott. Uh, I definitely don't mind losing Schofield. But what do they want to give us? Dunhurst, two-star potential. Ethan Murray, two-star potential. And Logan Hendrick, no. 
I don't mind giving up Trevor Gott. I mean, 31, expensive guy. Like, for me, getting something in return, but those aren't prospects. Not not, not real prospects. This is the final. I'm going to reject that trade, and that puts us at... We're done with our business. From a team that was roughly half two-star players at the start of the season, we're down to four of them. We're down to just four. That's... That's definitely a step in the right direction. We're even down to just 29 on the secondary roster. That, that's usually something that, that a lot of teams have some real difficulty with and having to let some decent players go because they don't have space on their 40-man roster. Austin Meadows still making league minimum, uh, but he is at that five-year major league service. I mean, he, he is due a pay raise, and I think that's why we're able to pick him up. But he's 29. Like I said, this season has been a bit rough for him, enough so that he has spent a good amount of the year down in AAA, where he's hitting 267, 0 0.8 wins above replacement for senior level with the Mariners, 185, like not good numbers, but even then still managed 0 0.5 win above replacement. That's the key. Finding guys who have some talent but have struggled a bit. I mean, look how balanced he is as a player. It's not something that we have on this roster. Left field, right field, decent defender. I definitely think we've managed to make some pretty solid moves, and we've made three moves in a positive direction. We've gone from a two-star to a two-and-a-half-star guy. We've gone from a position that was a bit overloaded, strengthening a position that didn't have depth. Pretty happy. And with 20 seconds left on deadline day, it's coming to an end with uh, moves that have made the weirdos a bit weirder. So at the conclusion of deadline day, let's get a feel for how the league is looking because time is going to really start to speed up with the major moves for the year behind us now. Meanwhile, uh, we have continued to, to lose. We have lost 10 straight. <laughs> 10 straight losses so from 40 and 59 to now 40 and 69 but Ruiz has been out for um maybe nine of those now you can really tell we're missing him Red Sox leading the east three teams all on 53 wins that's an interesting one but none of them doing particularly poorly Twins leading the central that's not a great record really either uh Tigers definitely a bit behind the others five and a half games ahead of us where we trail in the american league last place uh, astros rangers right there the angels right there even the mariners are not having that poor of a season we're just definitely lagging behind but you know the biggest thing is just this 10 straight losses really hurting our record uh, but increasing increasing our draft lottery odds braves Better than everything in the American League, 64 and 44. The Dodgers even better at 68 and 40. Marlins, Nationals, both struggling, but better than us. Pirates, not too bad. NL Central is pretty balanced. Uh, the West, of course, just good. Dodgers, Giants, two best records in baseball. Diamondbacks, good enough to lead multiple divisions, are third in the NL West. Then there's the Rockies, who are significantly worse than us. Number one in the odds department. We're number two in those odds department. We're 29th out of 30, and we've made progress. So I'm pretty dang happy with that. How are we actually doing in the grand scheme of things right now? Offensively, you got to put that at 29th on balance. Defensively, 21st, but probably a little bit worse when you throw in the other stats probably 22nd or 23rd but that's all about to change with the three grand changes that we've made in the last few days we should be a little bit better offensively we should be a little bit weaker defensively we will see how that uh, transpires over the final months of the season here we've also picked up a player development update Telez overall ratings three star Power rating dropped to a 55. Florial, better defensive rating, but he's dropped to a two-star. Big upgrades for Denzel Clark. Clark has been a 
hot topic in in the trade department most of the offers that we get in surround him and clark is somebody that i'm looking to get onto the major league roster to start next season he has zero service right now we're going to start that clock in spring training or you know following spring training johan lopez looking like a guy who might be ready for triple a what's his season looking like though yeah just a 198 not yet (laughs) not yet Cal Mitchell, that's a disappointing one because he's somebody who should be a lot closer to uh, Major League Ready. He was in Pittsburgh a year ago. Sullivan looking good. Henry Bolt. Is this this one of the guys I traded for? No. He's been with us throughout the year, but he's definitely looking stronger. But only at one star right now. He's got a long ways to go. Strauss Snyder. We we, uh, made a big move for recently. And mixed bag on him. O'Toole, good gains there. Just a reliever, though. And rookie league guy Oscar Oud, one of the better gains that we've seen. Not big numbers this year, but definitely uh, looking a little bit better than he was. So nothing amazing coming out of this one. Farm system rankings are based primarily, or really entirely, on your top prospects, as in major league prospects, superstar prospects. That's how the farm rankings are determined. So taking the utter garbage, which was 90% of what we had in our farm system, and flipping half of that to, to add depth does not improve our ranking. It improves our value, and it gives us something to then start flipping for that, right? That's why it was phase one. That's why we started phase two, to start getting better prospects in. And phase two did have some results already. Phase one had some results. And we have taken that, that the bottom end, that gutter stuff, and cleaned it up. And we have started to clean up that next level. And we have gotten some better ones in. Matias is an example of somebody that we have signed directly. Overall, our best prospects are still the same best prospects that the organization had at the start of the year. The good news on those is Denzel Clark, the guy we just talked about, who we are looking to bring in for spring training and have on the major league roster from day one next year. We're just trying to save that service time a little bit, thinking long-term. He's a high potential guy and he has made progress and his rank has improved. He was our first and only player inside the top 100 and he still our first and only player inside the top 100. But Max Muncy is also somebody who has climbed from being about 120-something to 102. And now we've seen Denzel Clark from going from, I think it was 98 at the start of the year to now 75. It's not good, right? There's 30 teams in the major leagues, which means he's two and a half times down the list before we even get to him. We're still lacking, and we're still very much at the bottom, bottom, bottom end of the list. Draft guys don't normally come in straight at the top and except for maybe the top couple uh, especially if they're close to ready it takes time for them to get established and impact how things are Uh, but we had kind of a weak draft year there there really wasn't much there compared to uh, what there's going to be in other years that being said we're we're still just getting started on on that rebuild uh, project and and reshaping the minor league system but we've definitely reshaped it and we've definitely reshaped our senior roster quite a bit this year Uh, but we're only just into august let's let some time run and see what happens with this club and the remainder of their season the losing streak has continued a week into august we still have not won a game in 16 16 losses in a row but a day after I left off, we, we had a minor injury to Tellez that's seeing him out for a couple of weeks. Of course, we've lost our Materos for the season, and Ruiz is finally coming off today. So Ruiz on the injured list. The team did not win a single game while he was out with his injury for about th- not one win in those three weeks while he was gone. Is his return 
enough to get this team going. <laughs> Literally the first day, no, not the first day. Actually, it did take a couple days, uh, but the team did finally get a win after a very, very lengthy uh, set of losses. Oh, New prospect coming in to our international system, two and a half star potential. You know, at our international complex, we have one guy who's maybe five star. We don't have very good scouting accuracy on him, and the OSA has him just at three stars. Either way, we're talking about a good prospect. And we've got five guys that we're going to go ahead and promote uh, from our international complex to the rookie league. Hopefully we've got something, you know, going there. And we also have some that we just need to let go of. That brings us down to uh, 28 at the International Complex for now. All right, I knew we were in for some pay increases. Uh, Rosario, $3 million. Meadows, $5 million, much less than what we traded out. The hard one, it's Teles. They didn't want him because they couldn't keep him. $19 million's a lot. However... I do think that even if we go and spend that, Tellez gives us something to then trade to somebody else. Somebody's going to want to keep paying that sort of player. And remember, we're a good uh, $12 million below where we were right now. And I think we can afford to do something with Tellez during the off season, Or he's the one that's going to be gone, right? Uh, the keepers end up being Meadows and Rosario and having the increased value and Tellez ends up being a guy we just borrowed for a short while because we can't sign him. He's going to end up going into free agency. I think that's kind of where we're at with that one. So overall, we made three deals and two deals are going to work out. We didn't know what his demands were going to be until we kind of get to this point. Tellez, too good to be true on that one. Uh, but the others are adding value to us and uh, we still have some expiring that we've got to worry about here, so we'll have to watch out for that. But, like, Piscotti's not somebody I'm worried about retaining. Uh, Natoli, yeah, he's been at AAA all season. We're not worried about paying him. We'll let a couple guys go. Taking a look at our team screen, we can get a good idea of how the team is shaping up these days. Uh, our rotation, most of them are the guys we started the season with. Uh, Mason Miller is the big time player and JP Sears has been, you know, with the team for multiple seasons. Uh, Blackburn with the team since last year. Spence with the team uh, promoted just this year, but has been with the team throughout the season. Libertori, though, ends up being the guy who gets that fifth rotation spot. So surprise there. Uh, we brought him in from St. Louis. He only had three games with them. Was quite young, but Liberatore did have some, you know, major league experience with St. Louis for multiple years. That's why he was on the waiver wire. Uh, but he has ended up getting that. He's had two starts now. He was in the bullpen before that, and Beto, who we brought up, ended up in the bullpen as a middle reliever. So where the pitching staff is largely unchanged over the course of this season. Uh, what is totally different here is uh, what we've got for our primary lineup, and you'll see just how different our squad is from that. Ruiz, yes, Ruiz is the guy. Jeloff, the young uh, second-year pro, and he's done pretty well. But Meadows, that's our new trade. Seth Brown, second year with the team stepped into a, a much bigger role looks like he's being used as a dh for the most part uh Rengifo. that's when we brought it from the angels so there's two changes in the first five florial from cleveland three changes langoliers okay well there's your young catcher ramirez brought in from tampa that's four and rosario Five of the nine in our lineup are new faces. And we knew that the lineup was really weak. And you can see why we've had some pretty big changes. Now, these guys aren't necessarily coming in as, woo, top dogs. Right? It's, you know, the bottom end of the lineup for the most part. Uh, we're, we're talking four of the five guys at the back end of the lineup. Significant changes. 
and only one of them is still struggling pretty mightily since coming over and that's Florio and he's more of a potential guy definitely a younger one than some of the other options that we brought in but we have made changes changes that are reshaping this roster and making us both younger and better uh, and this is not counting the biggest piece that we brought in who is out injured right now but it looks like he's going to be more of a one-year kind of loan all right well we've got austin meadows locked up for a couple of years so this move has worked out in our favor we got younger and cheaper uh He's going to be making under $5 million, so quite a bit, well, about a half million less than what he was asking for uh, second year and just a two-year deal. He'll be making like a flat five. So that's that's one deal taken care of. That's one trade negotiated and see why they wanted to get rid of him, right? He was going to be looking for a lot more money than he was making, but 29 and, you know, multi-year pro who's been decent and since coming over with 47 at bats already for us he's already got 10 rbi and a hit in 277 and we've got rosario signed up as well two-year deal 5.7 million so averaging just slightly under 3 million per year on that and that got him locked up so that's already two-thirds of those trades coming back significantly cheaper and younger than where we were at essentially staying same quality wise out of those but now there's that tellez is he just a loney or can we do something with him? What we're down to on our list of upcoming free agents is a bunch of relievers and then tell us. Only two of those relievers are not yet in their 30s. So most of those guys are going to be let go. Relievers are a dime a dozen, pretty cheap, pretty easy to get. None of them are asking for a whole lot, but there isn't much reason uh, to to be offering those guys that kind of money. Uh Right now, I've offered one. We had our closer at AAA level, who's on a minor league contract, who's ready to make the step to the major leagues. We're, we're going to pay him $1 million flat next year, so barely more than league minimum. Um, he's the one who's ready to make the jump. These guys are easily replaceable, and I've already largely replaced quite a few of them. We signed a lot of two-star current relievers, and young ones at that, so... No problems there. Uh, there are two that, you know, I might try to make a move and sign league minimum kind of deals to hang on to. They're majorly capable, and I think we can do a little more to want to keep those two around as they have some value, whether in trade or to our major league roster. And then, of course, the Tellez situation who I'm not opposed to maybe making some sort of offer for to hang on to. Not for $19 million, but if we can get him for maybe $15 million, is he good enough for that? Is he good enough to retain for that? Is he good enough to at least give us trade bait elsewhere down the road um, after making that deal? We've reached the end of August, end of September. New player development updates. Uh, Jordan Diaz looking really good. Jeloff looking good, now three-star guy. Uh, Langlier's okay through there. Denzel Clark continues to improve. He is so ready for that major league level. Uh, holy cow. Potential, now a four-star. Current three-star. So ready to come up. Do I want to give him this one month on that major league service uh, early, ahead of time? Maybe. Maybe. Thinking about it. He's ready so ready uh, and good development down the line i mean this this is a great month for uh, development we do have that roster expansion so we don't necessarily have to bump anyone down uh, to carry those two extra roster spots it's less than what it used to be if i remember correctly you used to have the 25 man roster now it's 26 so they've added an extra roster slot but then you used to get 30 for september 28. I know it's been a while since that changed. I don't remember how many years it's been now. Five or less, I would think. But a month on from our trades, from our moves, we've stabilized. We've been so much better after that 16-game, 17-game losing streak came to an end. We're, we're back to being a, a 400 ball club since. And consistently, we've been 
four of six over the last ten straight on from that stretch. So we're really right back to where we were. And that was still with Tellez injured for quite some time there. So we were missing uh, one of our two best players or three best players on the entire roster throughout that stretch, probably second best uh, on balance. So 49 and 87 overall, 38 games below 500. But again, we lost 17 in a row. Like That is a rough 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 stretch and to have stabilized since then you know we're, we're back to being okay still worst in the american league and even colorado holy cow they've been on quite the uh, win streak they're just a couple games behind us now we've got some decent odds here to to get a number one pick um miami's not much better than we are and there's not many teams that are bad that, that's one big thing there's three bad teams in the major leagues. Compared to a typical year, that number is usually four or five teams that are utter garbage. And that's just not the case. That is just not the case. Uh, it's a pretty competitive year across the league. And, you know, outside of, like, the Dodgers, even they, they've pulled way away from the Giants over the last month. The Dodgers, with 88 wins, are phenomenal second in offense third in defense there's only two other 80 win teams and they're literally at 80 in the braves and reds the giants slipped off the back at 77 now i wouldn't be surprised at all if they ran into the dodgers and got swept in a series and that really opened the gap maybe not not worried about figuring that out more but wouldn't be surprised meanwhile us the the ballads after a month Defense has dropped, exactly as I expected it to. Offense hasn't climbed, but we're clearly winning more often. And I think we're still just small ball on our way towards various things. Uh, home runs has moved up from tied for 29th to 28th. So we have overtaken a couple teams there. Average has gone from 30th to 29th, but runs is still down there at the bottom. So how much better are we yeah a little <laughs> a little is all you can really say with that where the defense is slipping from where it was uh not as consistent long term we're in a better place now the question is can we hang on to tell us we've played 136 we've got less than a month to go in the season or about a month to go in the season it's pretty clear that we're winding things down that we're going to come to the end uh Next episode, we'll absolutely reach the end of the season. And then, of course, there's that big what to do with Tellez. Can we get something done there? Right now, we're at 38 million. 12 million? Like, that's right in the neighborhood we already were. Tellez might be a player we want to try to hang on to. It's not something that the organization is used to. But fan interest is growing, and is he somebody who's going to help us with fan interest? One thing to remember is it's not just $19 million out of nowhere. He is making three right now. And there's a good chance that we can sign him for less than the 19 If we can sign him for 16 we're right where we were salary-wise with a player who's going to have decent trade value, especially if we can sign him for not 19 if we could sign him for a little bit less and just a couple year deal like we'll have really kind of gone full circle on salary being roughly the same roster being four or five years younger on a couple key guys and turning it into a few key guys i'd be pretty dang happy with that if that's the result so we'll definitely look to make a deal with Telez to see if we can uh, hang on to him for less than what he's asking that's going to be the big key for this to uh, work out favorably. But that's going to be the goal and objective of our next episode, finishing the season, re-signing Tellez. That's going to do it for this episode. I'm Kathleen Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.